Hello everyone, my name is Bottletop Hornet, and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft. <laughs> we are ready for a megasode. It is time to get a lot of progress done on some builds around here. I've been a little bit inspired by watching the new season of Hermitcraft. I know that I've been taking things a little bit slow with this series, and I've been trying to do things nice and, and chill but I feel it's time to prove to you guys that I can build with the best of them. And so I'm going to go above and beyond this episode. I'm going to show you guys what I can do and what I can build in one episode and really just dig into it and see what we can get done. So I have myself a supply of a little bit of materials, got myself some deep slate, some woods, a few extra bits and pieces, and obviously there's still plenty in my storage room. And I'm going to get straight into a time lapse. We're going to get into a good portion of the building straight away and then for the rest of the episode we'll pop back and forth in between time lapses and going across doing different builds around here and adding all sorts of stuff to this world. By the end of this episode we're potentially going to have twice as much building done as we have in the 29 episodes before. That's a bold claim, but it's going to look impressive. I can feel it. So I hope you guys enjoy. <laughs> We're going to have a nice, healthy time lapse to start things off, and then we'll pop back in and see what we can get up to for the rest of the episode. So, see you on the other side. <laughs> folks. <laughs> so we have made a little bit of progress, just a bit. I now have redirected this lava flow and after much time going back and forth while building all of this, we have filled this bridge with lava. The reason I've done this is because in this outline here, I want to build my iron farm. And I like the idea of the lava being a natural source, and then the city taking that natural source of lava and deciding to use that to power the industrial area. So this lava here, I'm probably going to use to uh, grab, as you can see it's dripping, we'll probably set up a bit of a lava farm hanging underneath this bridge at some point, but I'm also gonna use, in quotation marks, that lava source as uh, the lava for in here, even though it's technically not. Thematically, it's all filled up from that lava flow. And then if we pop up into the sky, we have a little bit more area sorted. So I wanted to fill this place out a little bit so that when I build that building, we start to have a bit more area to uh, build in roads and add other buildings for future. So there'll be plenty of space up here for different bits and pieces. And I've just started the process of getting this sorted. I want to make this a little bit of a garden, do a little bit more uh, work to clean this up and make it look nice and have this as a bridge going under here into the entry for something underwater down the line. But for now, this is our, uh, our humble beginnings and we've got ourselves a bit of path work done. So now you can walk across here around this side. I will detail up these walls and stuff a little bit as we go. A lot of what I've done is just adding the main structure in so that I can work on it later. And then we can come up here 
and this sort of all loops around, brings us to other areas of the city, up around into here and all of that, and we'll have a main road coming through to this side. But before we go any further on building this stuff up, I do want to get that iron farm started. I told you there was going to be a lot of progress in this episode, and I wasn't joking. <laughs> so, what we're going to do is probably remove the floor of this, because I want the iron golems to be able to fall far enough away from the main farm that uh, we can get some decent rates and make it work nice and efficiently. So we're going to remove all of this. Uh, <laughs> that'll just take me a minute. And there we go. So now we have this space underneath here, and I'm going to block off underneath the perimeter down to the ground, and then we need to deal with this water. <laughs> so, we're just going to use some plain stone, because we have that in a decent amount over in our storage room. Or even we might grab the stuff that we gained digging out our tree farm. I'm just quickly going to uh, drop a lot of this stuff off. Ah, see, because I'm full, <laughs> and I have no space left, almost anywhere, <laughs> for the stuff that I need to put away. Uh, uh, here we go. We're going to just completely empty out what we have so far, and a little bit there as well. And I've also been coming over to my villages the entire time, well, most of the time that I've been making this stuff, and I have been building up my supply of bricks. So we've been coming over here every day and trading with this guy twice to hopefully get a decent supply for this build. It's like that. Wait until we hear a little bit of movement from him. He might not do it because it's too late in the day though. But we're slowly building up a good supply that we can combine with some granite to use a similar build style as that on our iron farm. But there is definitely an order that this thing is starting to need to be done in. I've got the lava across. We're slowly building up our supply of the materials to build it out of. But I could just fill this up with sand or dirt and then dig it all out again. But that's no fun. And I do want to do a lot in this episode. So we're going to raid an ocean monument. So that means grabbing a few potions of water breathing. Eh, we probably don't need the health. We'll grab a strength pot. And why not a swiftness as well? We'll pop over into here and grab some redstone to extend those water breathing potions. Uh, pop over here. And once those are good, we'll grab our milk buckets. Maybe a trident. Which one's my good one? This one. We might put uh, mending on that before we go. And as we progress through the monument, that should heal up. We'll take our chest piece so that we can put it on once we're underwater. We won't need our elytra. And yeah, not bad. Should be just about ready to go. So, some bookshelves for some books. A mending book like that. Mending on our trident. And we'll make two more shulker boxes to take along on the journey. Like so. Grab our milk, just in case. And... We should be good to go. <laughs> now, I believe that the ocean monument I want to use for my main one and a future farm is uh, over in that direction. So we'll head out this way and have a bit of a look. <laughs> There's my beacon from where I was gathering some andesite and everything for that build. And it's also going to be nice if we find this ocean monument and get ourselves set up to prepare it for a farm in the future. Bees. All right. So somewhere out this way, I believe there's one that is mostly surrounded by just plain ocean without any land nearby. There we go. I think this is the one that I'm talking about. And yes, absolutely perfect. So we're going to uh, get ourselves ready, probably while floating in the air here, and get into it. So, chest piece. <laughs> Water breathing potion. And well, we may as well take a speed potion. Oh no. <laughs> I missed it. <laughs> no speed potion, it is. But we're going to go in here and pretty quickly make our way through. I'm not too worried about showing too much progress throughout the inside of here. I am more interested in uh, just getting what we need as quick as possible. Super simple to fight <laughs> your uh, Elder Guardians with a nice Impaling 5. One of these... Uh, tridents so we should make it through this in a very short amount of time ah there's a second one i think it usually takes about four throws yeah 
super quick and easy. And hopefully we get fairly lucky and get ourselves a couple of sponge rooms in this as well. For now though, we're just going to quickly swim over to the other side if we can and find our third Elder Guardian, which should be just there. <laughs> And that, folks, is how you beat <laughs> an ocean monument. It kind of helps when you're, uh, you're already fairly kitted out. We're going to take a drink of milk, and then I'm going to take another water breathing potion straight away. That way I don't have to worry about uh, <laughs> not being able to dig my way through areas. And let's see if we get lucky with a sponge room. May as well take this gold. And I also want to take... A, uh, a little supply of prismarine to start us off so that I can make myself a underwater conduit. But the real thing that I'm interested in is those sweet, sweet sponges. But if we don't have any luck, we might have to go find another, another one and see whether we can raid that as well. Oh, there we go. You love to see it. Now, <laughs> I didn't bring my, uh, my hoe, unfortunately, so we're going to have to do this slowly but just the one room of sponges should be enough to drain the iron farm area anyway and i'm sure we can do a run through all of those ones that we found on an adventure episode a little while back and get as many sponges as we need for say draining the ocean monument if we so desire may as well grab all of this uh, dark prismarine as well all right we'll do a quick check oh strange room this side though and we'll uh, see whether there's any here do a couple of little digs through the ceilings and see whether we can find anything fancy but i have a sneaking suspicion that that room was the only one nothing there nothing there definitely nothing there and that goes outside <laughs> well 33 sponges it is yeah oh well we can try another monument down the line let's head home okay so, now that we're back at base, I'm going to quickly go and uh, dry out all of these sponges, which is super easy now with the hose. God, that's satisfying. And so is this. Ah. And let's see if we can get the water drained out of that area, and also a decent hole dug in there to set ourselves up with a nice iron farm. Now, I think that this area should hopefully still be within the spawn chunks. So with a bit of luck, in fact, I can actually show the spawn location over here. That piece of deep slate is the spawn location of the world. When you drop something through the portal in the end, it will appear on this block here. So if we have a look out, there you go. It's actually the zero zero coordinate. It also happens to be where we spawned into the world or very, very close to it. So I think when we first started this world, I spawned somewhere around here. <laughs> I may even actually go back and have a look at the footage from when I did spawn in here. But that should mean that this whole area is within the spawn chunks. And let me just see from this point here. If that's zero, zero, how far away is our iron farm going to be because if it is within the spawn chunks it should hopefully continue to run we'll go to the other side so we're as far away as we need to be and i might even put on chunk borders yeah okay interesting maybe i'll try and make sure it sits in the center of there so they're in a chunk themselves but if we pop over here we are around 200 blocks away i'm going to do some googling and find out how big the spawn chunks area is and with a bit of googling, unfortunately it looks like this is probably a little far away. But that's okay. We're going to be spending so much time around these areas anyway, building and doing bits and pieces, that we should get plenty of iron from it, without it being running all the time. In fact, we might just grab ourselves a compass and double check where the spawn point is. I'm sure I have one sitting around here somewhere. There we go. And if we look at this, it should be... Right here. Yeah, okay. So it's definitely on this block. <laughs> yes. And if we count the chunks themselves, it's right on the border of a chunk. So it is probably these four. One chunk, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is about the border of our uh, spawn chunks right there. Oh, well. So we'll pop over here and grab some of that stone, put away all of this business. 
while we're at it, just to make some room. In fact, we probably, yeah, we already have a bunch of stone. Actually, let's take the stone bricks. And that way I don't even have to worry about it. So we'll start off by uh, <laughs> grabbing all of this. It's actually not all stone bricks, but there's probably enough stone here anyway. And I'm just going to create that barrier around the perimeter. All right, so now all we have to do is clear out that area. We'll grab a little bit of dirt and we'll get the sponges out of here with our hoe. And I'm just going to build up some little pillars to see whether we can get away with doing it without making barriers throughout the whole thing. I'm going to try and spam them down super fast and see whether that gets rid of all the water. You do have to be careful though because it can come back very quickly like that. But looks like if we manage to get a little bit done nice and speedy, it might be alright. So, boop, boop, and bit. Ah, yeah. Nice. And just like that, we pretty much have all the water gone. Nice. <laughs> alright. Very good. So now, all I have to do is dig out this area. Down, hmm, I'm not exactly sure how far I want to go. I'll probably mark out some basic areas where the, uh, the villager pods and the spawning platform is going to be, which will be a little bit higher up off of here. And then we'll go down far enough so that when the iron golems spawn, they drop out of the range of visibility of our villagers. And that way, the villagers can go through the cycle again nice and quickly to get another iron golem ready to spawn. So, I'm going to quickly sleep, I'm going to work that out, and we might do a quick 10 second time lapse of me digging out this area, getting it down to the right height, ready to go for the build above. Enjoy! Oh boy, <laughs> we have a hole in the ground. So, that took me about an hour and a half, but <laughs> now we've got about a 40 to 50 block drop from this height where I want to put my villagers. So the villager pods will probably go around where these blocks are with a bit of a platform just above it for the iron golems to fall down. And if we look at our height here, it's 73. And I believe I went down to... 43 or 33 33 so that way we get about a 45 block drop from the platform where they're spawned which is good now you may have noticed if you were quite eagle-eyed but i managed to discover that i believe one of these chunks is a slime chunk now it might be this one if i'm correct if it's this one that's awkward <laughs> because we don't have much of it exposed but if it's this one we could do something fun with that. So, I'm going to actually pop up here and we're going to wait and see whether or not... We might turn that off. We're going to wait and see whether or not something spawns down there. I want to see if we have a slime chunk. It would be amazing if both of these were, but I highly doubt that. We might have to fly a little bit further up into the air to despawn some of the stuff around the area. And we will hopefully have something show up. Hmm. Also, I managed to grab two more charged creepers in a thunderstorm during that dig, but hmm, there was definitely slimes down there, I swear. <laughs> hmm. The reason why that is exciting is because slimes will naturally try and fight iron golems and vice versa. We may be able to turn this farm into a combination iron and slime farm. I don't really need a lot of slime, so I don't need one that's super efficient. But if we could get a couple of slimes at a time, that rhymed, so did that. <laughs> if we could get a couple of slimes at a time, while these iron golems are dropping down into that area, we might be able to rig something up so that the slimes spawn and every time an iron golem comes down, they try and jump over, they either die on some magma or the iron golems kill them and all of their uh, 
spawns go into our storage system. So that could be exciting. I might just be very unlucky right now, not getting anything to spawn in there, but I'll quickly double check on a website like Chunkbase to see whether or not one of these is a slime chunk. And apparently I got very lucky because I'll put something up on screen. It appears that these two chunks are both slime chunks. And not only that, this is actually a four chunk area. It's an L shaped four chunk slime chunk. So it could be that we dig a little bit further down just to make sure that we're well and truly getting some good spawning platforms and we have some slime spawn in here. That could be amazing. <laughs> Let me just double check that. Amazing. We are right inside two chunks on that corner area that I've highlighted just now on screen. Amazing. So we, <laughs> that means that these two chunks out on this side, which is actually perfect because we can have a channel going down this side to have our iron golems flow through and then use a platform in here to spawn ourselves some slimes. That's incredible. All of that, bring them over here. We might even have a couple of uh, man-made iron golems just to draw them in consistently, stuck in this wall, and hopefully far enough away that they aren't detected by these guys. And this could be an amazing combo farm. That's kind of exciting. <laughs> Great. I think though the farm itself, as in making it all up and running and getting the uh, slime chunks done, will probably happen in the next episode. In this one, I just want to focus on getting the building set up around it. And that way, making sure that we can spawn proof it all and uh, double check that there's no area where they can spawn in around this building. And then from there, we can focus on setting up the mechanism and the actual farm itself and delivery systems. So I think what I'm going to do is gather up the materials that I have over here. As you can see, I did get some slime balls from in there. Uh, we're going to grab a few more pieces of this brick. And now we really do have a decent little supply going. Wait and see whether this guy refreshes his trade. Maybe not. <laughs> but that's all right. And we'll have to grab some of our granite as well. Because I want to do something very similar to this, but on a much larger scale. And we're going to see what we can come up with. Much like everything else that I do, it is going to be improvised. It's probably going to be quite square quite rectangular, I suppose, very industrial looking, if I can manage that. We'll make a nice big building here that we can put walkways around the outside made out of steel and bits and pieces or iron. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think it should be pretty good. So we've got these materials here. I can probably store them inside here. I've got heaps of stone now and bits and pieces that I need to put away. Managed to get a lot of coal during that and we're probably going to pop into another time lapse it's the easiest way for me to show it off to you guys and i'm going to make it up as i go oh proof haha -ha. <laughs> oh well that was quite anticlimactic <laughs> but we do have proof that they spawn down there i swear it's not in my imagination I'm going to uh, maybe lower this a little bit more. I'm going to double check the heights now in 1.18 for slime chunk spawning. And then, yeah, I'm going to build myself up a iron farm warehouse, I suppose. We're going to call it a warehouse. So an iron farm warehouse in this spot. I hope you guys enjoyed this time lapse. And I'll see you on the other side and we'll do some decorating. And have a look at the rest of the area around and what we want to put there. See you on the other side.
And I'm out of Deep Slate. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's all I had left. But here we are. This is the start, not fully decorated yet, not fully detailed, but the start of our iron warehouse. So I used all of the remaining iron I had, and we are going to have to get this up and running to be able to continue this walkway around the outside. But if we pop up into the air a bit and jump on top of it, I really like this as a little bit of a industrial style walkway around the outside. And we'll probably continue this on the inside around the farm itself, because the ones underneath the fence there are spawnable space, but these ones here are actually sitting on top of a block. So they're not spawnable. So we should be able to use those sort of things in here around the farms and manage to get access to it all quite easily. So I'm probably going to go get a little bit more deep slate and finish off this roof. And then once we've done that, we're going to go over. And we're actually going to heal a couple of these zombie villages over here and bring them into the warehouse itself. And then I'll put two into each bay and give them the three beds. We might just do a cheeky little breeding up of them. Even though for most of Haven, I want to not use villager breeding. I want to bring them in and cure the zombie villagers. But in some cases, just to get the population up a little bit, it would be okay to breed a couple. The main draw of getting them all from zombie villagers is that it doesn't matter who they are, where they are, if I want to set up a trade with them, I don't have to worry about expensive prices because they will all be cured. But yes, this side here is fairly basic as well as the back here. I've got to be careful around that. I keep getting very close. But I tried to keep in mind that this side will probably be visible and we'll probably build up something over this way a little bit more, which means some of that might get removed. All in all though, I'm kind of happy with the style and, and the way that it's starting to turn out. Once we have a roof on it, it's going to look a lot nicer through the windows and everything, or the uh, bars, and we should have nice access through the middle here to work on our farms. The other thing that I did is I continued this bridge of lava through, and I think what we'll do is out this side have a little pool of lava that is maybe building up obsidian. So maybe we have a water flow coming down or out of the building and uh, pile up some coal and obsidian around here as though it's the uh, the overflow, the, the junk that comes out after it's been used, I suppose you'd say. So let me go collect a little bit more deep slate so I can finish the roof on it and uh, we'll probably have to finish detailing it in the next episode, but for now... That's not a bad warehouse. Okay. So, <laughs> deep slate gathered and roof partially done. I've started to add a little bit of detail around the outside. And up on here, I think I'm going to make some smokestacks of sorts using these. <laughs> so we're going to get some smoke getting out of there and uh, build something up around it. But before we get too far into that, I just wanted to finish up a couple of things on the outside. One of them being this front doorway here. Just needed a little bit of love to do so. We're just going to do something like this and maybe grab a couple of dark oak stairs if we have them. Yes, beautiful. And we'll do a little something like that. And like this. I don't know. <laughs> just keep adding stuff until it feels like it's, it's good enough. Now that is very dark down there, so we might... Just go down with a couple of these lanterns and quickly light it up. Come in one, two, three, four from the corner. One, two, three, four, corner. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And we'll try and find that center point as well, which is about there. There we go. That should keep that lit up and spawn proof while we uh, do all our stuff above. And you really get to see the scale of this room now, the, uh, the size of it. I haven't actually lowered it yet. We'll probably do that in the next episode. So let's jump up top here and out of our front door. And I might start adding some lanterns around the top, but we'll also work on those smokestacks. So I know somewhere here, there we go. I have some copper. We're going to break some of that down into cut copper. We're going to break some of that down into cut copper stairs. And we might actually break out the uh, outside of this like so. And we'll create the base of it out of copper. Same with these ones. From there, we'll hide these ones 
just super simply like that and like this. Oops, <laughs> don't block it off. And I might go and get some acacia if I have it, as well as make a couple of lightning rods. And we'll add those around these too. These should weather away over time and eventually we'll have some nice looking copper stacks on top of this building. We'll probably add some little bits and pieces on the top here as well. Like, let's work out about the central point, which should be that. Go across here and we'll add something a little bit like an air conditioner system. Putting random bits and pieces around like so. Hmm. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> That'll do. Something like that. All we need is a couple of lightning rods. And we'll grab those and just... I don't know, do something like that. <laughs> this is a style that I've never really attempted before, so it is fun to experiment and see what I can come up with. Stretch my limits a little bit try out some new things we might continue on the side of here with something like let's see whether we can make this work put that there and that into the top yeah i don't know <laughs> it's interesting it's something different we'll fit all around with that as we work through it this one we might open up completely so it looks right down onto that uh, lava there and then imagine that this is like something to allow all of the uh, the nasty gases or whatever that are coming off of the lava to escape out the roof of this structure. Just need a couple of these to be turned into, oh, I need to clear some space, half slabs. So something like that. And then something like this. And like that. <laughs> Maybe. We'll have to see what it looks like when it starts to uh, age up. I feel like it looks a little bit too sticky outy, <laughs> like it's not quite uh, not quite meant to be there. So we might feather it up a little bit with a couple of pieces of deep slate. There we go. Make it feel a little bit more part of it. We might even do something like this. Not like that. <laughs> yeah. And we'll bring some corners up where we can, just to try and bring it in and feel like it's uh, it's meant to be on top of this roof. It's very flat looking, so <laughs> that's something that we do need to work on and make sure it looks all right. I am going to jump down here quickly, since it is night time, and try out a few lanterns, just so that we get that nice glow around the building. And then we can go have a quick look at it uh, before we sleep through the night. All right. And I feel like this area here is just a little flat looking. So maybe we'll do something like that on those edges. Like so. Obviously, we're going to need a little bit more iron before we can truly finish this. Eh, nah. <laughs> so there's that. But yeah, okay, okay. I can live with that. Definitely needs to uh, age slightly. I feel like the next stage after this is about perfect. Just a little bit less shiny looking. But that looks a bit like a warehouse to me. We probably need a little bit of lighting down at the base here. Because these areas here are spawnable. Even though this stuff out here is not. For now, <laughs> we'll probably just place a couple of random lanterns sitting on the edge. And we'll come up with a different lighting solution later. Yeah. <laughs> nice. It's definitely getting there. I think now it's probably time to go cure our villagers. See whether we can get them across here and ready to go for the next episode. Where we're going to make an iron farm. And slime farm. I swear there's slimes down there. But while it's still night time, let's have a quick fly around and see what it looks like from different angles. I want to get an idea of what it will look like as I come out from areas where I frequent. Yeah. I think maybe we could put a little bit of brick in there as well, instead of it all being just the uh, copper. So maybe we'll try that. But it does look nice and boxy and industrial, which I'm happy about. And I think we'll add just random little bits of detail as we can. For now, probably we'll sleep through the night, I'd say.
So let's put away a few things. We have so much junk in our inventory, it's ridiculous. I might grab a little bit of granite, a little bit of the uh, bricks as well, and yeah. Also, it might pay to use these plain blocks as well, so it's not all the exact same looking. Yeah, vary it up like that would be nice. I feel like once that goes to its next stage, it is going to blend in with that a little bit nicer, but it was definitely far too much of the same when it was all just the copper. I think that's much better. I don't know if the brick will work. Let's have a quick look, see. Maybe, or maybe just some plain granite. I think the best thing for us to do is probably wait and see once those start to oxidize a little bit. For now, we'll just do something a little bit like that. Nice. Yeah, one more on the bottom. Yes. <laughs> and we'll have to wait and see. Okay, let's go work with some villagers. So, I know for sure that I have, yes, some potions of weakness. So we'll grab those. And in our gold, we've got two golden apples. We should eat, ooh, a third golden apple. Any more? <laughs> we should be able to pretty easily make a couple more with these there we go we'll make it so that we have six just in case and we're going to come over here and cure these guys so that is not how you throw those that should easily get all three of them beautiful we do have to be a little bit careful here with the uh the three zombies being nearby these other ones because they could potentially get a bit scared and summon an iron golem and I really don't want the iron golem to accidentally kill one. So we're gonna also throw that in there and cure you up. And we'll quickly go and get a few spare iron bars just to hide the zombies so they can't get damaged. The last thing I want is for the subjects to get taken out. So we'll do that and we'll do that. Beautiful. From there, it's just going to be a matter of moving them over, and uh, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do it. Possibly trying to get these boats up onto here. In fact, maybe while they're curing, we do just that. Grab this boat, come over here. Yeah. Because that way, we're going to be able to go most of the distance over to our new warehouse. Well, I should probably, uh, yeah, that'll work. <laughs> Using the existing flooring that we have without having to go up or down any bumps. Come over here. Beautiful. And we'll get one more. Hey, bud. Do you want to come out here? You don't fit, do you? Oh, you do. <laughs> this way. In the boat. Nice. So having four, we should be able to set two into each module. And then that way we can breed them up They'll have a baby each, and we'll have three in each, which is going to be perfect for our iron farm. So give me a second to wait for these guys to get ready to go, and then we'll take them over to our new warehouse. There we go, and... Come on, my friend. You can do it any second now. Ooh. Wait, why did I get hurt? <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Did I get hit by a projectile pair of, uh, <laughs> of golden boots? <laughs> that startled me. All right. So, that's good. We have four villagers. Hey, friends. We're going to bring them over one by one. Get them a little bit closer. And this is going to be a nice slow journey. But we can take them around to the front door to make it so that we have the least amount of space to transport them on our rails. <sighs> Yeah, I'm probably just going to come back to you guys once I've got them all at the front door. All right. Gosh. Villagers are difficult to work with. <laughs> so, we've got all four over here now. It took me an entire day and nearly <laughs> the next one to get them here. But now we can begin to set them up. <laughs> set them up in their little pods and uh, get some beds sorted and all of that to get them breeding. So I'm going to make sure that I have some beds, going to get some rails and some dirt and everything sorted. 
Hopefully I should have a little bit of that already prepared. Uh, definitely got the dirt that we need. I'm sure I've got some rails somewhere from when we were working on our bee farm. In fact, we should check that out. That's probably been close enough that it's been working away while we're down there. Hello bees. Have you been producing? Oh, <laughs> okay. Yes, uh, apparently it works. Good. <laughs> I was not expecting that much at all. Uh, what about our sheep farm? Also, yes. Huh. That's good. Very nice. But none of that is really important to me. What is, is some rails, please. Please. Please? Uh, I'll check everywhere I can. And then once I've made some new ones, I'm sure I'll find that I had them stored away somewhere. Rails. Oh, rails. 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 Well, <laughs> looks like I'm making some, but that's all right. So we may as well grab the spare beds that I had from when we took down the village early, early on. And we just need to make one more, probably using some of this wool from up here. Beautiful. Okay. Now, we'll grab some iron, make up a stack of rails, that should be more than enough. I've got four there, <laughs> but still not quite what I needed. Now let's see whether we can get these guys up in here. So, first of all, we're just going to temporarily remove this and yeah, back this guy out of the way so that I can make a little rail system. We'll come up to this side first. And in reality, do I really need to make a rail system or do I just set up some beds and have them run towards it? <sighs> Probably that. Oh dear. I'm going to put the beds just here and I'm making this custom. I'm going to try and do this my way. <laughs> Not really following a guide or anything like that. I want to try and make this iron farm work by myself. So I'm going to put that there and hopefully get these guys up there safely. We'll do the same thing over this side, like so. And then I guess I'm waiting till it's night time to see whether we can get them up there. Yeah. I think while we do that, because it's only just turned morning, we might quickly pop up and grab some of the crops that we have growing up here, because we're gonna need to give them some food for them to breed. So it's probably smart to organize that Nice and quickly. Should I use my... Hmm, I should probably get Fortune. And since I'm not making a villager breeder or anything, one quick swipe through of these carrots will probably be enough. Let's see. Two and a half stacks once we've uh, planted it back. Just under two and a half stacks. Hmm, maybe we'll get these potatoes as well. Yeah. <laughs> that should do the trick. Now... The last thing that I'm going to want is glass. So do I have any over here? Only the tinted variety. We don't want that. So we might quickly pop across to our storage room. Just make the most of the day. Like this. I don't have any. <laughs> Damn it. There we go. Problem solved. And now we wait. That should be close enough. So I'm going to quickly block off this area so that they couldn't escape. And we'll just move these guys into here. And we don't really need these rails or anything like that, fortunately, but that's okay. We'll make sure that there's plenty of space there. It looks like they're already taking the beds, which is good. And let's just do that. Okay, you go to your bed. And you, go to bed. <laughs> okay. You, go to bed. Okay. You, go to bed. <laughs> to the left, please. Thank you. Okay. Oh, this is good. 
So, what I should be able to do quickly while they are sleeping is build up an area around the outside of them. This will just be temporary so that we can keep them in while we make sure they've bred up another villager. I'll do the same over this side. Um, out of blocks. And just to be safe, we need to make sure that none of the babies can get out. I don't need those. And I don't need that. So, we'll block off any spot where they could escape from like that. Hopefully, that should be secure. Ah, <sighs> okay. Good. Now, we can sleep and double check that they don't escape, give them some food, and hopefully, they breed. All right. I can hear them waking up, that's good. They're still in there, which is also good. Now, make babies. Go on. And some potatoes. <laughs> we'll go over and give these guys the same, and with a bit of luck, it should work. Pick up the, pick up your stuff. There's food, right here. Let's try and put it directly <laughs> where they are. Oh, okay. Take some food. Do the thing. <gasps> like them. See, take their example. God, this is weird. <laughs> is that enough food? Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. That's a baby. And, shh, baby, I hear it. I hear it. There it is. Okay. So. What we will do now is once again, wait for night time and then I will block them in, remove all of the blocks around so that they can only stand on these beds on both sides. And then all we'll have to do in the next episode to get this up and running is make a platform for the iron golems to spawn on, bring some zombies in here to scare them, make sure it's all safe and secure. And it should work a treat, I think. <laughs> so I'll be back with you guys. Once it has gone night time again, which is another decent wait for me. And with a bit of luck, we're all ready to go. Nice. All right. See you in a second. Ah, good. Ah, good. It looks like they've gone to bed, which means I can get to work. That's not creepy at all. <laughs> but now I'm going to lock them into place. So for starters, we're going to do that on either side. Bit of glass there, there. There, 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 and there. And that should technically stop them from being able to spawn anywhere once I get rid of all of this dirt. So we'll dig away all of that. It's gonna get dark for a little second, but that's okay. And we'll remove the dirt from underneath the beds, like so. What I'm gonna do in front of the two adults is I'm actually going to see whether I can, I need to get a little bit lower, I want to see whether I can hang some workstations that they'll have access to. Which they might not from there. Maybe we can do it above. Oops. <laughs> let's, uh, let's try this again. So, with a bit of luck, they might be able to gain access to these workstations up here. So I'm going to put one there and one there. We have to make that aligned. Like so. And the thinking is that when I set this up in the next episode, once we start getting some iron, I can make some walkways around here that the iron golem can't spawn on, but that we can access these guys who have been cured from being zombies, and we can use the iron that we gain from this farm to get easy emeralds from them. So hopefully that works. For now though, <laughs> we're just going to get rid of all of this dirt. Do the exact same thing on the other side and fingers crossed when they wake up in the morning they're completely locked in and ready to have a farm built around them there we go oh there we go we might also just add some light up on the edges nearby them so that it doesn't look too dark even though technically nothing should be able to spawn in there with them it's still better safe than sorry so if we come over here i can actually get up onto my platform from there we'll grab a lantern and can we do it like this? Yes, perfect. Move over to this side, do the same thing. Ha ha ha, wonderful. I think that's our villagers in position. Oh my goodness, 
let me sleep for the night, make sure that they stay where they are. And then I think I've I've done it. Ooh, hi friend. And we can hopefully stop sleeping outside here. Okay. They're in their pods. The little fella will grow up. We may as well go down here and grab all of the remaining pieces of dirt because I don't want to waste it. Blip, 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 blip. And we should be able to drop some iron golems down into that hole and make use of this warehouse. Yeah, it doesn't look like they're taking that job. So we might have to uh, do a little bit of moving around and trying to get them to have access to it. But for now, pretty happy. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, actually, I just realized those glass blocks are one too low. <laughs> uh, whoops. Okay. That will probably fix our problem, though, if we get in there and do that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll take these back and we'll put another layer on top of the whole thing. Now we have to carefully remove <laughs> these from underneath. Our light's going to disappear for just a moment. Okay. <laughs> and now... It's a case of trying to get underneath there. Let's see whether we can drop to there. That underneath there. There we go. Look at that. Yes, perfect. And then we will drop down here, grab this stuff, and then we should be able to put, if I can get up there, goodness, a lantern over on this side. Like, like this. Perfect. <laughs> That's good. Now, these guys are going to be ready to trade. We might trade them up to make sure that they get their uh, their trades locked in. I'll do the same thing on the other side. And then I think we're safe. <laughs> Oops. I, uh, I jumped in with the baby. Sorry. So we'll do the same thing. Drop down as low as we can there. The beauty of doing this while those two are grown up and the baby's not, is we can guarantee that those were our zombified villagers. And then when these guys grow up, it's actually kind of cool that uh, we managed to get them both on the same <laughs> same side. But when they grow up, we don't have to worry about it too much. Uh, I wonder if I can reach that from here. Yeah, perfect. Cool. Okay. <laughs> so now we can say that those are all in position. Yeah. Now they have the space that their line of sight is going to be able to see the zombies that we bring in here, which is great. And in the next episode, we should be able to set up an iron farm. Perfect. But with that, <laughs> I would say it's probably time to finish up this episode. I didn't necessarily get as much done as I was hoping to build-wise, but we still did a little bit. One thing we might quickly do, actually, is come up here and grab a few of those and those because we can actually put those in and see what it looks like straight away. We'll grab some wax while we're over here as well, like so. And let's just try it out because this is probably going to take a long time for these pieces of copper to, uh, <laughs> to oxidize. So if we take those out of there, put that in there. Yeah. See, that's not too bad. What about this? Not bad at all. So I might go through in between episodes and I might just do a little bit of work getting this all up to a, a sort of level that I feel like looks good. Add a few other things on top of this roof as well, I believe would probably be helpful. But I think we'll call it. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope you enjoy this little, uh, well, not exactly little warehouse that we have going here. And also the work that I've done around here, getting ready for some future builds. I think this place is going to turn out really nice. And it's going to be fun to start adding some uh, buildings throughout here as well. We'll have to start getting ourselves some villages set up, which would be nice. Now that I've got those ones in there, which is the main ones that I was really concerned about, every other villager that we bring in is going to become cured and given a job. So... Over the next handful of episodes, it's definitely likely that we'll start to have some much better trades available to us and be able to get a little bit more rich over time. In the next episode, we're going to pop in and uh, make that iron farm and combo slime farm, see whether we can get it all working together so that we have slime and iron coming out of this warehouse 
And I want to ask you guys, what other farms do you think would be worthwhile in an industrial district? Because this is going to become our industrial district. And even though we have a couple of our farms up there, we could definitely add some more down here of different types. So let me know what you think. We could do bamboo, we could do kelp for kelp blocks, all sorts of stuff. Let me know. But with that being said, thank you to my level three Patreon supporters and I hope you guys take care of yourselves until the next one. I'll see you then. Bye-bye, everyone. Uh, oh, we might splat here. Whoop! <laughs>